Sonic has a story coming out about the idea that rich older people might be using the blood of younger people to slow aging. It sounds crazy, but the idea has been around since the 1700s, and recent mouse studies have suggested that there might be something to it. The mouse studies have actually shown that mice infused with the blood of younger mice live longer and show signs of being healthier. This whole concept, of course, brings to mind dystopian scenarios in which young, poor people are bred to give their blood to older, rich people. There are a variety of risks, including disease transmission and the possibility that we could get the dosages wrong, which experts worry could actually be fatal. There's a good chance that in the coming years, scientists will figure out which proteins could actually benefit us and create an actual infusible medication. And in the meantime, the rest of us would be wise to sit back and wait. Mainstream media reports elites can ingest the blood of children to prevent aging. Seriously this week, a study published in Science and Nature Medicine revealed that transfusing young mouse blood into old mice can actually prevent the symptoms of aging. This groundbreaking discovery could lead to medical breakthroughs and the development of new medicines. However, a report from the Vice Health News outlet Tonic has pointed out far more sinister applications for this knowledge. It was suggested in the report that aging elites are using the blood of young people as a type of youth serum. A similar claim was made by journalist Jeff Berkovici last year, after he conducted several interviews with Silicon Valley aristocrats including Peter Thiel, and learned about a transfusion procedure called parabiosis, where the blood of young people is used to prevent aging. There are widespread rumors in Silicon Valley, where life extension science is a popular obsession, that various wealthy individuals from the tech world have already begun practicing parabiosis, spending tens of thousands of dollars for the procedures and young person blood, and repeating the exercise several times a year, Berkovici reported. In his article, Berkovici also expressed concerns about a developing black market for young people's blood. I know it sounds too outrageous to be true, but these horrific practices have been commonplace among aristocrats in various different cultures throughout history. In most modern cultures, mass murder and human sacrifice still takes place out in the open under the cover of warfare, while many argue that cannibalism also still takes place but behind closed doors. It is only in the past few hundred years that the practice of cannibalism among royals has not been publicized. In Europe, around the time of the American Revolution corpse medicine was very popular among the ruling class, Charles II even brewed his own image, http colon slash slash theffreethoughtproject.com slash wp dash content slash uploads slash 2017 slash 01 slash corpse dash medicine dash egyptians dash embalming dash 631.jpg underscore underscore 800x6001 underscore q85 underscore crop.jpg corpse medicine egyptians embalming 631 jpg underscore underscore 800x6 600 underscore Q85 underscore crop image, HTTP colon slash slash pixel dot watch slash QUT7 Dr. Richard Sugg of Durham University has conducted extensive research into the practice of corpse medicine among the royalty. The human body has been widely used as a therapeutic agent with the most popular treatments involving flesh, bone or blood. Cannibalism was found not only in the New World, as often believed but also in Europe, Sugg said. One thing we are rarely taught at school yet is evidenced in literary and historic texts of the time is this, James I refused corpse medicine. Charles II made his own corpse medicine. And Charles I was made into corpse medicine. Along with Charles II, eminent users or prescribers included Francis I, Elizabeth I surgeon John Bannister, Elizabeth Gray, Countess of Kent, Robert Boyle, Thomas Willis, William III, and Queen Mary, he added. If this wasn't strange enough, the current royal family of England are direct descendants of Prince Vlad III Dracula of Wallachia, modern Romania. This was the sick and depraved ruler, Vlad the Impaler, who was known as a butcher and who eventually became the inspiration for the most famous vampire stories in history. 
Mark Palacio and other speakers and whistleblowers at this year's Free Your Mind conference are some of the only researchers who delve into these deep topics. Of course, the recent reports do not point to any specific person or provide any evidence of people who are drinking blood to prevent aging. However, the science is now there and there is a historical precedent for aristocrats being involved in these types of activities. Read more at http colon slash slash theftreethoughtproject.com slash media dash ingest dash children's dash blood slash pound sign idmcqvjx2recbkwm.99